this way of talking. The person I most like to be analytical and self-deprecating with is my sister. She can take it. She tells me to reframe. Everyone could benefit from a conversation with her. She's who I go to when I need to dissect the hard topics that I wake up obsessing about. I'll ask tons of questions and she'll sister us through via text or wine or coffee. All useful vices since the Davy sisters are a strong cup of coffee. So come here if you can relate or need some sistering yourself. There will be lots of laughter and a whole lot of reframing as we work our way through some of life's big and small stuff together. Welcome to Sister On. Hey, Nat. Hey, Beck. I miss you. I miss you. It's been like four, maybe five whole days. <laughs> we, she was at the farm with me and then, and then she went home to get her hair dyed. Yeah, and it's really blonde, and I'm really happy. So I'm going to spend half of this podcast experience just staring at myself in the screen. <laughs> <laughs> After a year, man, a year of this. So yeah, it looks good. Meanwhile, mine is like, I had to, you, to you told me to comb <laughs> it down so it would be more slick. <laughs> just <laughs> embrace the slick. I literally haven't washed it in three weeks. <laughs> I was like, you need to channel Bella Hadid. Anyways, there you go. So I am, yeah. Um, so we're sitting here with our guest. Well, it's all technically we're not sitting together, but you get it. Our guest today is Craig Pike. Born and raised in St. John's, Newfoundland, Craig moved to Toronto in 2004 to study at the George Brown Theatre School. A Dora nominated actor, Craig started Craig's Cookies in 2013 and now has four locations across the GTA as well as expansion across Canada. He has been the artistic director of that choir for over 10 years and is the proud puppy dad to Jonathan the Corgi. Craig, Cor did I did Corgi? <laughs> <laughs> I knew I should practice that one. Is it, what's it called? No. Corgi. <laughs> Corgi. Corgi, okay. Well, yeah. okay. What type, Craig, hello. Hi, hello, <laughs> hi. Should I just read that bio again, you guys? Oh my God, no. Jesus, no. no. Okay. Okay. I thought that was perfect. <laughs> that was perfect. The Corgi. Why do you guys both know that? Craig, you know it because that's your dog. Nat, why do you know everything? I know things. I don't know, Becca. <laughs> okay. So, Craig, the thing, okay, the thing that is particularly in interesting to us, all of these things are interesting, but the thing the bio doesn't say, of course, is that you are a twin. I and... am a twin. <laughs> because um, we are titling this episode twins be like <laughs> twins be like yo absolutely <laughs> I mean, we you, recognize, you we both recognize look a lot that. of like do no, we no, go. yeah you could be twins absolutely yes Tw twins be like and we're practically the same and that means i get to look two years younger yes <laughs> <laughs> ding ding uh, <laughs> um but but just going like Craig, do you actually know that you're really famous now? Do you know that oh. you're famous because of Craig's? <laughs> is, it, is it funny that the thing, like, we went to, okay, okay, the story here, one of the reasons I know Craig is that, or the reason I know him is that we went to theater school together. So that's how I first knew you. And I didn't know you were, like, such an entrepreneur. And maybe if someone said, how would you like to be known in the world as an actor or as an entrepreneur, would you have said actor or like, do you care anymore? Or like, just tell me things, Craig. Like, do, okay. Yeah, I think. Do you know that you're famous? Okay, let's just start It's there. really interesting because, you know, I think when you work in the arts um, early on in careers and sometimes even throughout somebody's entire career, you can have uh, the ability, whether it be good or bad, to have such an identity connection to your work. and. Um, self-worth connected to um, your success as an artist. So yeah. I think being known or celebrity, et cetera, et cetera, quote unquote, as an actor, it's never been really something for me that I've, I've been um, interested in. With Craig's Cookies, if you had asked me when we met in 2004, Rebecca, that, um, <laughs> would, I, would I own a bakery? I would say absolutely not um no no way no how and so finding myself in this place right now in 
in 2021 is really curious to me and it 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 is landing a bit more inside what uh craig's cookies has been able to do for the community in toronto and for for people that um that i'm really interested in helping uh within neighborhoods and and um underprivileged not underprivileged but um folks that need a bit of help uh so that being said about six months ago i was in my kitchen and i was pouring myself cereal and i don't know it just hit me i was like oh my god i'm craig of craig's <laughs> cookies <laughs> <laughs> like it did hit me. Like I was like, I'm the I'm the guy. I'm the dude. Um, and it never really clicked before that that was the case. Um, so that's a long winded answer. I hope everybody's ready for a long winter's nap after that that <laughs> long long answer. Um, we like we like long answers for sure. <laughs> but yeah, you are Craig, which actually is funny because like people like Craig's cookies will come up in the most random ways and. Like my husband, for example, he, when he was in he was in sales for a while, and he would bring his clients Craig cookies, Craig's cookies. And did you ever did you ever see him come into your shop on Queen? No, no. Okay, if I don't know if you're if you're ever there, but it was so exciting for his clients, and it was so exciting for Simon. Like he felt really original that he was bringing this unique gift to his clients. And then I will meet like people at my daughter's school and somehow like someone will bring Craig's cookies or Craig's cookies will come up. Like it's just like all the time. And then I always try to say, because I want to insert myself in that, I'll say, I know Craig. <laughs> I know Craig. I, it's, it's actually my recipe. And... <laughs> yeah, they're, they're actually my cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Rebecca's cookies. I think there's a ring to that. <laughs> well, this is the first time I'm getting to meet you. And I've inserted myself into such a conversation before because I know you by proxy through Becca. So when my girlfriend's husband brought home Craig's cookies for their anniversary, my comment was, oh, I know sort of craig through <laughs> and it became like this extended thing so it is it's like fame sort of extended it's like that kevin bacon what's the the, the, yeah. the seven degrees of separation, separation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But totally. a far less interesting version or more because of oh my gosh. Seven, separation seven degrees of separation from craig craig's cookies yeah. from craig from craig oh, oh my, my goodness. god yeah that's, that sounds like a really fun game that everybody should play i'm kidding <laughs> like is is your family so proud of you they are, yeah. I think that they uh, they definitely did not see this coming either. And um, yeah, they're really, really supportive. Which is like, is that part of your interest in starting a shop down there? In St. John's? Yeah, so yeah, we're like, a location that... in St. John's, hopefully in the next two months. Uh, part, of, <laughs> part of the cookie company's success, I think, is me just making decisions without really thinking anything through. So I was in St. John's two weeks ago. I'm like, that could be fun. And there was an empty space next to a, a really cool, um, a really cool like micro brew pub kind of thing uh, in a really neat up and coming part of downtown St. John's. And uh, so I called my real estate agent in St. John's and said, hey, listen, can we, uh, can we do this? And he was like, okay, so we're going to do it. That's amazing. Cookies and beer. Yes. That's like Cookies and beer combo. in Newfoundland. I mean, oh, why not? That's awesome. Yeah. Is there anything about being a business owner that is related to acting for you? I mean, uh, yeah, I think I think um, anything that anybody chooses to do in life and pivots careers and uh, or wants to do different things, anything that you've experienced in life will bring yourself forward into the present. Mm -hmm. So, with acting, I think uh, the the gifts that I learned from from that part of my life, uh, definitely being able to, you know, speak uh, in complete sentences with confidence is one thing, you know, as a business owner, yeah. um, you know, quote unquote, being on my voice when um, hard decisions have to be made, because, you know, I know that it's, this is a podcast, but I do have dimples, everybody, and I do look, I'm, I'm kind of cute, but, um, but when you have to make the hard decisions, you have to the dimples go away and people are like, oh, wow, the cookie man actually has a backbone. Um, so I think definitely like being assertive, um, a theater school and, and being an actor has taught me how to do that for sure. Um, and yeah, just like learning how to, how to be empathetic and being really curious about people. And then I think with theater, um, 
and you know, Rebecca, like the more you, the more you act or the more you're creative, the more you then get to know yourself and the more, the older you get then too, the more confidence you have in yourself. So I think part of the success of the brand of Craig's Cookies is that I've been able to really make it a reflection of my ethos and my, and myself, my queerness, my, uh, my interest in, in developing, um, communities and, and, and helping, uh, and helping the community that I live in, um, uh, in Toronto and different neighborhoods and stuff. So, uh, I think that's definitely been part of how the arts has influenced my ability to be a semi-successful, I guess, entrepreneur. Is it Amazing. entrepreneur or entrepreneur? I think it's it depends newer. what what mood you're in. It's it's, it's corgi, so <laughs> exactly. I'm a corgi dad and an entrepreneur. I think Dorothy Ward would say it's entrepreneur. <laughs> <laughs> Dorothy <laughs> Ward was was Rebecca and I's speech teacher, by the way. No, I can imagine it. <laughs> yeah, she, was, <laughs> she was very specific. Um, you sound so together, Craig, but. Let's just say, have you processed all of our theater school trauma? Because <laughs> because just wait, like this app, this um, podcast. Have you? <laughs> oh no, oh no, I don't think so. We can talk. We can talk about that. Let's talk about your <laughs> theater school trauma. Yeah, well, I was just thinking how, like this app, this podcast is a lot about reframing too, and like reframing life, reframing our experiences, like in, in some ways, what you just said is like, maybe you have, like, that's a lot of reframing theater school in a way, like how it served you. Have you I think when I started theater school, I was definitely a different human being. You know, I think we, we are different human beings every five seconds. I, I've been listening to a lot of Oprah over the <laughs> um, uh, uh, And uh, yeah, I think theater school definitely, um, was difficult for a lot of us. Uh, we learned a lot. <laughs> we learned a lot, and we said so calmly. We were able to. Uh, we were able to build a lot of really great relationships. I mean, I'm so grateful that you reached out for me to be here, and that's something that is so awesome and amazing and lovely that came out of theater school. Um, you know, I think for me, I, I'm not sure if. I experienced a lot of trauma in theater school, but then again, I'm not sure if I was open to really accessing all of the truths of what was happening while I was there. I don't know if I was old enough to really understand or mature enough um, to really understand what, uh, what the pedagogy of that program was at the time. Wow. That's Maybe. Craig and I are the same person, but he blocked it all out. You let it all in. There we go. <laughs> <I> would, <laughs> like, potentially the the bad pedagogy. Mm -hmm. I think there was a lot of. <laughs> I think there was a. I think there was a. Yeah, there was there was definitely uh, some negative uh, ways of inspiring creation in the school that I think was that not is... conducive to a positive learning environment. Wow, you guys, this is awesome. I'm a, like, I'm seriously, I'm used to being the one that has to like ask big questions and do all the reframing, but you're just like- Oh no, deep dive. Doing the deep work, dive. man, this is awesome. <laughs> I mean, how is your experience? Have you done a... how's, how's, how's your time been since theater school and processing everything that, that we experienced? <laughs> That's good. You you should throw a big question like that right back at me because <laughs> um, I don't know. Yeah, I did. I had a lot of. Well, I think I I definitely was not a favorite in theater school. So that I neither was I. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, I think it certainly has made me or it resilient in the sense that I. Like when you're not loved, like theater school is all about, I feel like the, like you want the big roles, of course. And like actually another, um, up at my farm, I've there's another theater school person up here, Robin, he's in Prince Edward County. I love and we, Robin. Yeah, I love Robin too. And we were just chatting, like we were, we were having a good laugh session about the characters we played in our third year plays. And I had remembered Robin being a lead and she was like, a lead 
no. Like I was like a maid in a, she was like, I definitely was wearing a white shirt and like, she's like, however she's thought about it now, she was like, I was not a lead. And I, I was, and I was not a lead either. So it's like, she's, she seems to be okay with it too. She's done very well. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Like, so I think not being the favorite just has, you know, for sure caused me to dig deep and find other ways to create. And I think, so I think it's been useful. Like I, I see a lot of myself in you and that you've, you've turned into this entrepreneur. And I think I've been pretty entrepreneurial myself. So I guess mm -hmm. that's useful. Absolutely. I mean, would I have liked to have been, had some great roles and been oohed and odd over? I mean, I think I would have, but maybe I wouldn't have. I mean, maybe that's not the best. Maybe that's you guys. Do we, do we want that? I think, I think that's part of it. I think, I think anybody that says that they don't want to be oohed and odd and, uh, and, you know, be appreciated for the work that you're doing. I think that's, then there's, there's a false sense of reality there. I think, I think we all want to be appreciated for the work that we're putting into our, our love. And with, I think the arts, it's just can be so tricky because it's, um, it's, what's the word? I always get these two words. Is it, is it, uh, Oh gosh, my brain. Mm -hmm. um, not subject, objective or subjective? I don't know. Subjective, really subjective. Exactly. I, I, I need a dictionary. If and anybody if not, out there if... in podcast land wants to send me a dictionary, 155 Dalhousie Avenue, or five <laughs> unit nine. Actually, there is, um, I think, I'm going to order a thesaurus, actually, if you're ordering a dictionary. Great. I love a thesaurus. Thesauruses <laughs> are amazing. <laughs> I have to figure out the word I want to use first before I can actually use a thesaurus. So I can use a dictionary before the thesaurus. We'll just be a team. No, but, uh, but I... Yeah, but I think you're right. I think I think theater school definitely has the ability to either gain, give you a lot of confidence or strip a lot of confidence away. And then there's the building, rebuilding of that um, and finding out what kind of artist you want to be when you leave theater school. And I'm really proud of you, Rebecca, for everything that you've done with with your film and production and with the, the series you've produced. And, you know, it's really, really inspiring that you and you and Mary Claire just took everything by what you wanted to do and, and ran with it. Yeah. Thanks. Because I think there is something that's also an interesting thing where you like embracing where you are and what you did do with it, as opposed to being stuck, being sad about what you didn't get you know mm -hmm. what i mean like i think yeah. i still sometimes could be like oh that hurt a little bit and now i i feel because i didn't get that i'm going to be stuck over there being sad and as opposed and then i can't be happy for what has worked out and i am building which is not i think you're particularly good at reframing in that way what do we have going on right now what are mm -hmm. you what's what's good here like what would what are you missing because you're stuck looking back over there i don't know one thing i was talking to, to somebody about this just the other day actually funny enough and uh, you know I have, I have many parts of my life that um my therapist helps me with but one of them that i've been pretty good at i think is is not feeling envy um mm. for, that's huge yeah yeah for uh for um other artists and other people's success, I guess. Um, and yeah. But have you had to work at that or that's something that naturally comes to you that that's not something you struggle with or that together you have really worked at you know, like, that? You know, somebody will get a part and I'm like, ah, oh, I wanted that part, but I don't sit with it. And I never have, mm. I've never been one to like, to, to get, um, it doesn't affect my mental health at all. Mm. Other things do, absolutely, mm. <laughs> but mm. uh, but that that has never uh, been a part of my my journey. I think so. Um, that has been helpful in in being an actor. I think one yeah. of the things that this podcast has been about has so far, and where we sort of hope to keep going with it, is focusing on our sisterly connection because Beck and I are so we're close, but we do a lot of this reframing and sort of support work through our various journeys together. And so I've heard many of these conversations, right? Like I've sat, it's fun to get to sit in and listen to you guys sort of work through theater school. I was there the other day when Rebecca was 
chit-chatting with Robin and talking about it. And I'm sort of the observer from the outside, sipping my wine, going, wow, I'm really happy I didn't go there. <laughs> <laughs> but yet I had my own challenges and my own academic programs. And so it's interesting. I really, I think I resonate with what you guys are talking about because of sort of a, a proximity to your pain, right? I mean, like as, as a sibling. And so, I mean, thinking of you as a twin, I'm trying to imagine, like maybe I'm storing it in my head as something because I've seen like twins in movies and shows and everybody seems so like inherently connected. But is there something about being a twin that impacts your day-to-day -day life and the way that you reframe and look at the world and talk about, you know, your successes and pains? I mean, is that piece a uh, part of your processing? Is Not necessarily. I think no. Keith and I's relationship are, as twins are very different than what you would see in movies and, and mm. uh, yeah. the expectation, which is interesting to grow up as a twin and then be expected to have a relationship with him. Right. The way that, the way that everybody else assumes yep. twins are behaving with each other. So yep. Like, yep. there's that. Um, and then, which is a whole you know, different podcast. But um, I think he's also in the arts and he also you okay. know uh, studied studied theater at sheridan musical theater program while i was at george brown and he went down the path after a theater school of uh, interacting and producing you know so they're uh as as twins who are also in the same field um we really uh, for me because i can only speak for myself i really wanted to commit to building my own career and my own identity separate right. from him. Yeah. Mm. That's interesting. Like, we touched on that, right? The other day about like the difference of us being in such separate fields. I mean, as much as I can talk about being an educator and they talk about the edutainer in education because you're on stage all the time in front of people trying to perform and make people interested in, you know, literature or whatever it is that you're teaching. That's my world. Um, it's not, it's not the same as Becca's space that she's having to occupy all the time in these various actually production writing spaces. So there is a nice separation to be able to kind of engage with each other. That's that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Right, like is that, does that, like are you guys, is needing to like sort of, you know, make your identity separate from him? Is that partly to do because you guys are in the same or grew up in the same field? Like you went, grew up meaning when you were, 25. <laughs> yeah, no, but I think growing up from when we were five, like I think mm -hmm. like being both artistically inclined, you know, uh, so both involved, very heavily involved in music, both heavily involved in, in, uh, in theater and in dance, uh, and also both being queer, um, and then not mm -hmm. being able to be confident in ourselves in, in until I, for me, in my early 20s, to actually, um, you know, step into my for lack of a better phrase, authentic self. Um, mm -hmm. Thanks, Oprah. Um, uh, you know, I think I think a lot of that for me was just really trying to um, not necessarily consciously separate myself from him because it wasn't a conscious thing, but it was just I. You you know you had yourself as an individual, and you have yourself as as a family member, and then when you're twins, because you both look alike, there's an expectation that you're probably the same human being. Hmm. And for me, apart from being twins, I'm just a very strong-willed human being. And hmm. from an early age, I was like, no, I need to be me. And I don't want to be connected to this other human being. Um, hmm. on, not on a love level, not on a family level, not on a, on a, but on a, just on a, like a personality level. You know, yeah, an expectation. Um, people, exactly. Yeah. People just assumed we had the same personalities and had the same interests. And just because we were both in music that we were able to do the same things. And that's mm -hmm. not really true. So uh, so is he, are, you guys are actually quite different. We are very different, yeah. Uh, and he's not as kind of strong-willed or as, would you say? Because I think he's very strong-willed, you know. Yeah. Um, I in, in, in It might... Uh, yeah, I can't really speak to, to that for him, but I know that for myself, uh, and I'm talking more so in high school, um, mm -hmm. just, you know, you just try to survive in high school. Right, yeah. Especially if you're an outsider of any sort, and that doesn't mean queer, that just means you're different, you know? You just, you're yeah. really just trying to get through the end of high school without getting beat up every day. Um, 
or that was my experience, uh, you know, so whatever you could do for me, whatever I could do to, to do that, I, I did. And it was just survival. Like it wasn't, like I said, a conscious, conscious decision. And part of that was, um, really separating myself a bit from him and, and finding my own individuality. Mm, right. Which is interesting how we, like how defining ourselves against something is really useful for, what's the word individuating or actualizing, self-actualizing, like how we had to define ourselves in a way against theater school, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And like in, like in terms of like in opposition to your brother in a way that has really made you, I mean, just because you needed to, you needed to be your own person. It's actually, that I think is some excellent reframing I just did right there. Like that's yeah. really, really useful to define, to have things we have to battle in a sense. Like even if he was, he wasn't creating a battle, there was sort of a battle for you there that you had to. Yeah, he wasn't creating anything. I think it was just, it was all in me and uh, without knowing it, just putting up boundaries. But then, you know, coming through that and, and working through our twenties and now, you know, turning 40 in a couple months, I'm able to look at it in a way that is, you know, the past and find forgiveness in myself for, for separating mm. myself from him, I think, in high school. And um, I'm so proud of everything that he's doing in the arts. Uh, it's different from what I'm doing. And it's, uh, I would say it's probably even more important because he's, he's educating people in the way that maybe you and I should have been educated when we were. Mm. Oh, that's yeah. so beautiful. Yeah. Hey, why can I just say one thing that before you yeah. why like what's what's the Oprah thing? Like, like I mean like I love Oprah too and but like how I are you, know I'm only how are you getting I'm, inspired or are you really? Because I want to be inspired by things. So by things, it. yeah. You know, the pandemic has really been a time and um It's been a time, all right. It's been a time. And uh, <laughs> you know, as a business owner when the pandemic hit, uh, you know, and I didn't like, like everybody has probably figured out by now. I'm not, I didn't go to business school and I have maybe no right in owning a business. And I'm, <laughs> I'm definitely, I'm definitely not a baker. Um, so when the, pandemic, you... when the pandemic hit, I, I really went into panic mode to try to keep 86 employees employed and wow. um, worked every day and uh, you know, 12 hour days for almost nine months. And um you have eighty six employees. We do, yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. And and uh, you say and you say we, which is really exciting. That that, uh, that means it's big, Craig. If you say we, we, you, I guess so. I mean, I I but I've been saying we since it was just me because <laughs> because I oh my read, gosh because I read somewhere told you to do because <laughs> I read somewhere that it just you know makes people think that you're like bigger than you actually are. Like when it was just yes. me baking, I'm like Craig's cookies, here are Craig's cookies, we blah 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 blah. I'm like it's not actually just me, but. Um, yeah, Matt has taught me to do that. So I do that yeah. too now. We, like we. Absolutely. Well, it is plural because there's two of you. So yeah. No, no, no. In all of Becca's in, like artistic ventures, I'm like, no, no, no. You're not a, it doesn't just have to be I. Because in some ways, the weird thing about the I piece, right, is that people can also get a bit funny about sort of the centering of the one. Whereas as soon as you say we, you're including those who are now trying to engage with you and whatever it is that your project is, whether it's cookies, right, or whether it's, like the artistic piece you're putting out into the world via Rebecca's it's, writing. Like so it's, it's a really newsletter or something. Like yeah, why not yeah. make it a we? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, but so pandemic hard, Oprah pandemic good. Pandemic difficult, Oprah. I found myself with a stage four ulcer on my esophagus last summer and was wow. like yeah. blood everywhere. Just to oh, add some yeah. drama to the podcast. Blah, oh. blah. Um, if, if you wanted some sound effects. I like but, drama uh, and sound effects. Is that, <laughs> is, is, is that a result of stress? Yeah, absolutely. And oh. acid reflux and getting older, I think. And uh, so I found myself in hospital in the Muskokas. I mean, if you're going to be oh. in a hospital, the Brace Bridge, the Brace Bridge Healthcare <laughs> Center is just. Is that a good one? <laughs> good to know. <laughs> well, funny story. They thought I had pancreatitis and almost removed my pancreas. Oh, my gosh. Um, and they were they were you know, getting ready to bring me to surgery to remove my pancreas, and then they were like, "Oh, actually, it's the other person in the room that has pancreatitis," because there was another young man in the room that was literally crying for forty eight hours, sweating, dying because pancreatitis is very serious. Yeah. And I was sitting there just like playing Angry Birds on my phone, and they're like, "You have pancreatitis." I'm like, "Okay." Um, and there's a young man in a lot of pain, and then they 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 confused us. 
And you weren't twins. And we weren't twins. <laughs> just they, just were, they, they just weren't actually good at the job. So maybe Bracebridge Hospital in Muskoka, not so great. But, you know. That, but, uh, <laughs> uh, that would have been like the craziest lawsuit. The craziest lawsuit. They're not sponsoring you, are they? They're not <laughs> no, no, they're um, not. You, you could have opened so many more Craig's cookies. If they I know. <laughs> between, oh the jigs, between the jigs and the reels, you know, I got to a point last Christmas where I was in a really toxic relationship as well. And, um. That is but no fault of either of us. It just was just uh, both of us were in a place where we couldn't be present and honest with each other. And uh, everything came to a head January 1st. And I called, I went on Facebook and I was like, I need a therapist. Um, because I have so many things in my mind and in my heart that I cannot organize myself. And it's mm -hmm. overwhelming and I need to stop crying. So I went to Facebook, I was like, anybody, I need a therapist. A lot of people, you know, were like, go to my therapist, go to my therapist. I'm like, how do you even choose a therapist? And then yeah. I was like, okay, this is what I'm gonna do. If I think that that person has their shit together, am I allowed to curse? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, um, you are. Uh, um, if, you? Uh, <laughs> if please, person, please. If I think that person has their shit together, then I'm gonna call their therapist. And there were some people that I was like, um, I, don't think, I think you're cuckoo, so I'm not going to go to your therapist um, because obviously it's not working. Um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm or so yet, kidding. But... I'm so, I'm so kidding. Um, but I was able to start a really good uh, working relationship with uh, Lindsay, my therapist, in January, and it's been it's been so helpful. It's been it's been such a a gift to be able to uh, to uh, work through a lot of stuff. That's brilliant. And is hmm. does she like Oprah? As well. she, oh yeah, the question was Oprah. Like I said, I, I, I talk way too much. Uh, Oprah, she does. I, we haven't talked about Oprah. I think you know there was a mo there was a time there when I first started therapy that I was just searching for somebody to make me feel better, as opposed mm. to as opposed to loving myself and finding the love from within. So mm. I was listening to like Super Soul Sundays, um, mm. all the podcasts, which has a lot of good stuff. But eventually, come I think March, I was like, I can't listen to Oprah anymore. I can't listen to anybody's ideas of how I should be living my life. I need to really, I can be inspired by it, but ultimately I just need to do the work myself. If I'm choosing to be broken open and to deal with the mess, then it's up to me to, to, to work through it. And it's not up to Oprah's you know, wisdom to, uh, to do that work for me. But I, and I think a lot of myself, and I, I feel like a lot of society, you know, they, they self-help books and stuff are really important, but then they expect that's, that, that, that's the work. And that's just the, the, that's just the, the starting point. I think mm. it's really mm -hmm. a journey of, of self-love and, and loving yourself and putting yourself before, before anybody else. And, and then not in an ego way, but in a really, uh, in a way that then the more you can love yourself or I can love myself and the more I can actually give to everybody else around me. Mm -hmm. It's really cool that you're able to be that vulnerable because like I, I could see also you now needing to be Craig all the time. Like you're Craig of Craig's Cookies, Craig. Like does Craig need to have it all together at every moment? Like do, have you felt that pressure? Which I mean, I, I think it's just really cool for to hear you just you know, name, there was your a journey. This, yeah, there was this really vulnerable point. It's still vulnerable. Like here I am, Craig of Craig's Cookies is, is like, like it's hard for me to. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like there was a lot of pressure put on myself by myself um, mm -hmm. to uh, show up in a way that would make everybody happy and not let everybody down. Um, mm -hmm. and try to fix everybody and fix problems. And uh, I was able to get through that luckily, because a lot of people sometimes don't, um, you know, uh, that I've been able to like see that, uh, that it, like I said, it's just, it's, it's about, it's about self first, but not in an ego kind of way, but about in a real, um, I don't even know how to say it. I was going to say Zen Buddhist kind of, but it's not. That's trite for me to even say because I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not Buddhist, but uh, it's hard to explain. I think I'm still trying to figure it out. That's yeah. perfect, though. That's exactly what mm. I mean. What's what we talk about on here is just the idea of the processing it through, right? I mean, that's and if you, if you can do it honestly, then that means a lot, and it probably makes for a better cookie. 
it makes for a better experience for sure for yeah. for for um for the folks that are coming in to get cookies i think yeah. you know uh part of a big part of craig's cookies is is how to build community and um well, one of the proudest thing that i've that i the thing that i'm the most proud of is you know when i get young folks applying that are um, non-binary or trans and they say, you know, I want to work for you because I know that I'll be going to work in a safe working environment. Mm, um, that's awesome. You know, so it doesn't matter how many cookies we sell or how many locations we have. If I'm still able to create a space uh, that's full of safety for people, then that is the most important thing. Oh, that's mm. wonderful. Absolutely. How's your relationship different with your sister? My sister. I'm not very close yeah. with my sisters. Um, okay. Deidre is 14 Your months. Your sisters. Oh, you have two? I do. Deidre is 14. <laughs> She's 14 months older, and uh, mm. she lives in Quebec City, and she has mm. uh, two children, uh, Jacob and Patrick, and uh, who I love dearly. And um, I, I, we don't see each other often. Uh, she also moved away from Newfoundland when she was 20 and I was 18. So we've seen okay. each other once a year for the last 20 years. Uh, okay. and we don't, uh, we don't communicate a lot on the phone. Um, yeah. and, uh, and then my younger sister, I love a lot. Uh, but you know, she's seven years younger than I am and I moved when I was 20. So the last time we spent any long time, uh, extensive time together was when she was 13. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, I think it's interesting when you look at when you asked me to be part of this podcast, I was like, do I have any right being a part of this podcast? Because I'm not necessarily entirely really close with my family. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and it's and it's something that uh, I've definitely grieved and worked through mm -hmm. and uh, have been able to come out the other end and, and love them deeply. Um, but it's not one of those families where you know, we all see each other on Zoom once a week and yeah. and we all get together and debate and fight and love openly. And it's interesting because I'm very much that person and I've always been that person. I think that's why I moved when I was 20 is because I felt like I didn't fit in with my family. Um, yeah. and, and I'll say it again, it's no, it's no um, slight to anyone in my yeah. family. It's just, oh, it's yeah. just, that's, you know, who I felt my core was that I was like, mm. I, I belong somewhere else right now and mm. to be able to, you know, step into my quote unquote authentic self. Uh, that's interesting because I do very much associate you with being so open and gregarious and and I, it, it's true. I would have thought that your whole family was that way as well. That's like totally a, just made up a story. That it, mm. So it's, that's interesting that, that you have felt as sort of the fish out of water a little bit. Absolutely. And, you know, it, it is definitely something growing up when I left Newfoundland and making friends with people that do have incredible relationships or seemingly incredible relationships with the family, you know, very, very uh, outwardly um, close and, and the romantic ideas, you know, of, of Sunday night dinners and, you know, but I think part of it, but it also happens in a lot of families. And I definitely, I definitely felt like I would, I didn't have that and I and I was you know I processed a lot of uh, disappointment and anger and, and uh, sadness and and just grief around that and so now I get to be a 40 year old man who just fell in love with someone and uh, and get to build that for myself and that family yes. that, I, that I might have you know yes if that's too it's, deep I'm so sorry no oh my god it's, it's never too deep and <laughs> like yes rooting for you we, we Nat and I were trying to like figure out when we became really close because we are really close now but we asked our mom what like what she remembers and she was like what did she say now like how much we fought yeah and she she was, she was really she was kind of <laughs> negative about our relationship now that you had to process that yeah, I had to work through that one because we have all these pictures of us as little kids, like hugging constantly, like my arms thrown around Becca's shoulders. And like there was definitely a big sister, little sister sort of connection thing happening, obviously. But then probably in our sort of like high school years, I think high school is just really hard. And as a high school teacher, I can speak to what I observe of these young people who are navigating so much. Oh, my gosh. Like it's hard to be close to anybody because you're still trying to figure yourself out, right? I mean, as you've just spoken so eloquently about Craig. So, I mean, I think that in high school, 
I went to an art school, so I should have been like really in touch with like all my feelings, but I, I really built up some serious walls probably in that time because of who knows why really. So retrospectively, looking back on our lives as sisters, I would say that there was like probably a chunk of time in there where we were um, just figuring ourselves out. So that means you're not then not as connected as we've become as adults. But it's I mean, interesting. Not, Go ahead. I think, we, I think we actively fought, like we were big fighters, like door yeah. slammers. Oh yeah, it was like, don't use that phone. (laughs) (laughs) Natalie was so sensitive. This is what I remember. Like she was just like, I always remember, like I actually see that in my daughter right now, my youngest daughter. She's always um, complaining to me about how my oldest daughter is treating her and she'll sulk a little bit. I'm not saying you sulked, Nat, although maybe you did. (laughs) I don't know. I probably blocked that. I don't know. I don't. (laughs) Probably I I did. (laughs) But she's all like she, she's really delicate and and like Elsie's you know doing this or that and and when I you know dive into it a little bit it's not very much like Elsie's maybe given her a look or like it's quite mild so sometimes I associate Natalie this is just putting it all out there I associate you with being that sort of delicate flower because the look <laughs> means so much oh my gosh I totally I get your youngest. <laughs> That you were, I think, yeah, and I I always remember, I remember thinking, oh, I wish we were the kind of sisters that could just fight and yell, and then it would be over. Instead, it was like really small things, and then we, intense, and then you don't say much, but then you go and shut the door, and you're mad for two hours, and then we would have to have these really big conversations to sort it out. Do you remember any of this? Sort of, but my point would be (laughs) that perhaps those sort of like death by a thousand cuts moments when we were younger has actually given us the tools to do what we continue to do now right Absolutely. yeah we, yeah we built up the resilience to be able to do that which is what you're saying you like craig you, you know your vision for creating that with your own family yeah moving yeah forward. and i think and i mean my brother have been able to to work through a lot of that and also you know become closer as a result of it as well mm-hmm. mm. Yeah, so, you know, a good fight is actually something not to be afraid of. And that was probably something I navigated when I was in high school was a, a, a lack of willingness to to engage super emotionally with with anyone in terms of like a fight. Certainly yeah. my part, like, you know. Well, right? how many times did like, you know, I think, I think how, we grew up in the 80s um, and it might be different now or just my idea of parenting would be different. But I know for us, like how many times did my mom and dad just say, stop fighting? Mm, yeah, I suppose yeah. like, what's going on? Mm-hmm. Let's all sit together. Let's communicate how you're feeling. And I suppose, yeah. and, then, and then you learn that fighting is a bad thing, that you just have to stop fighting. And yeah. that's not, I don't think, um, yeah. you know, conducive to a healthy relationship, whether that be mm-hmm. siblings, friends, lovers, um, yeah. et cetera. Yeah. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. One thing I've, not you've mentioned this, or you and Clifford have talked about this, but one some, something we sometimes say I've in our households, I think you guys have maybe stopped that a little bit, but are you good? Like I'll say to yeah, Violet, yeah. Are, you, are you good? Like, are We've you good? That. Are we are we good? And I have to catch myself because I realize now, I, like, does she always have to be good? Mm-hmm. Is being good the right, like, as long as everything's copacetic, is that what I'm saying by that? Mm-hmm. So I think it sort of goes along with what you're saying, Craig, like fighting, not and, and not being good, are those things, can those things be allowed? And can we just, are we allowed to be what we are, experience what we're experiencing? And can we all be brave enough to experience those things? Because it is hard for me as a parent. I want her to be good. Mm-hmm. I don't want her to be sad, sad. You know, it makes me concerned. It brings up stuff in me. And then, but that's. But you also want her therapy bill when she's 40 to be not as much as mine is. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because apparently kids these days aren't going to have any money, right? (laughs) So they're really going to need our... (laughs) Or a way to live in or an environment that's healthy. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Or fresh water. Or fresh water. Let alone a house. Yeah, exactly. Well, Craig, you're so wise and it's been lovely to talk to you. I was going to ask you this question, but I think you've... I was curious about like any sacrifices you've made for your twin, but maybe the sacrifice... Like, like I was thinking in 
in terms of twin, a twin sacrifice in particular, because that seemed really interesting, but it sounds like maybe just staying by each other and not, um, I don't know, or how would you say it? Like, it sounds yeah, like- Yeah, I don't, I don't think I've sacrificed anything for, for him. I think, I think we've both, you know, on the flip side of everything we've talked about today, I think we've also given each other a lot of space to also um, be who we are and what we need. You know, I think mm -hmm. if anything, I, I used to sacrifice me being um, honest with how I'm feeling with him as, in a way to protect him. Um, mm -hmm. And now, mm -hmm. you know, uh, to bring it full circle to what we were just talking about, I think that's not actually the way that you should live life. I think mm -hmm. you shouldn't. You should always be honest and, and have the hard talks and have the hard chats and, and have the tears and have the laughter. And then what will come out of that will be something much more fruitful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just, that, that's like summing up the whole point of our sister on podcast. <laughs> so right, that, right there. That's our thesis. Done. <laughs> all the laughs, all the tears. So that you can be better on the other side. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Thanks so well, much, thanks. Greg. Oh my God, thanks for creating such a really safe, loving space to be able to really speak openly about all of these things. I really do appreciate it. Yeah, and thanks for thanks for being so willing, Craig. I, I really appreciated how you were just like, yeah, for sure, I'm in. It just- It's brilliant. It was, it made me feel loved. Anything <laughs> you need, I, anything you need. If I can, I will be there. <laughs> Even cookies. Even cookies, absolutely. Wonderful. Take good care, Craig. Bye. Thanks for having me on. Good luck bye with bye. your Newfoundland um, venture. Oh, yeah, yeah, venture. Come, come out and say hi anytime. Yeah. <laughs> bye. Bye. You will never be sad.